lot of controversy about willpower itself, whether it's whether it works like a battery and the more you use it, the more the battery is drained and then you need to sleep for it to charge back or there's another source from which you can connect the battery. Um, it's a bit more internal, maybe using consciousness, maybe using certain thoughts, triggers or visions. You feel that fuel building up in you when you're motivated or inspired, you have more willpower. And there's a thin line there that a lot of people want to understand better. Reason being is because this can happen often. We feel tired and then we skip our workout or we break our diet or whatever we do, right? And it keeps on happening. And then one time we say, okay, despite how I'm feeling, I'm going to go to the gym or I'm going to, I'm not going to skip that meal. And then what happens is that you get a little sense of accomplishments and if you keep building this up, it will start building into positive macro emotions. And there's a big difference between macro emotions and micro emotions. And we're going to talk about that in a later video. But for now, what's fundamental is to understand the TFAR relationship. Thoughts and triggers lead to emotions and feelings. Emotions and feelings lead to actions and actions lead to results. Now, the reason why the T stands for thoughts as well as triggers is because there is a difference. In a previous video, we spoke about the difference between how a thought can influence us on a physiological level and how it can also influence us on a psychological level. And there is a difference. Most often than not, there isn't really a trigger that's taking place, but it's more of a thought that's repetitive. And you see, it's pretty simple. Animals cannot project within their imaginations a possibility where, for example, their partner passes away and then start crying. But you, or us, the most intelligent species, you can imagine someone very loved to you dying, and you will feel the emotional response within you as if there's actual sorrow. And as previously said, it is a blessing yet a curse. Because thoughts alone can then lead us to feelings and emotions, and then we act based on those emotions with not, without really being able to justify them logically. Now, why am I telling you all of this? What does it really have to do with emotional intelligence? Well, let me tell you. If there are certain emotions and feelings that we're trying to deal with, if we fixate our conscious awareness and effort on those emotions and feelings, we're just going to end up more lost and more confused because most often than not, it's really hard to understand why we feel a certain way. So what happens is that you end up putting so much effort into dissecting, understanding and controlling those emotions, but it's going to always backfire because of the way the emotional system works. There's always balance that needs to take place. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Balance needs to be established. So regardless of how much effort you put towards the emotions and feelings, it would be a lot more efficient for you to focus on what triggers those feelings and emotions. So the triggers and thoughts, and then what reinforcing behavior are you taking on? That's becoming kind of a habit, a physiological or physical habit that automatically brings up some feelings for you to go and do it. And that's especially the case with addictions, for example. Take cigarettes or nicotine, for example, your body, your physiology is craving nicotine. And then what ends up happening is that this physiological reaction pushes certain thoughts, feelings, and emotions to get to the exact same result, which is more nicotine. It's kind of like this substance that's manipulating its way into getting more of it in the system. And at one point we get to realize that emotions are actually not generated on a conscious level, but on a subconscious level. And our control, our conscious control over our subconscious programming is not the best. So what ends up happening is that you're working towards something consciously, but then you have some subconscious emotions and feelings that are holding you back. All right. So picture yourself in a boat, right? And there's a certain island, which is your goal, your target, and you want to get there. And as soon as you start moving towards the island, 
your subconscious brain throws some emotions and feelings into your system to try to derail you, right? Because it wants to stay comfortable within the survival zone. So what ends up happening is that a big anchor drops and hits the bottom of the sea. And before you know it, you're stuck. You try to move, you try to keep moving, but you can't really do anything. See, you can use your conscious ability to move the boat as hard as you can, but as long as the anchor is holding you down there, you will not be able to move. But if you start directing your conscious focus into dissecting the thoughts and triggers, bringing up certain emotions and feelings that you don't want to experience or that you want to limit and control, and then you look at the actions that you do when you feel those negative emotions, so when you feel lonely, for example, and that's an emotion that you've been experiencing often and you want to deal with it, what are some actions that you take? Is there any specific behavior that you do when you feel or experience this emotion that's addictive or that can, that can develop a physiological dependence or psychological dependence in a way? And when the emotion is in the middle and you have a shift in perspective, you're looking at all the different triggers and thoughts that cause the emotion and then the actions you're taking after experiencing the emotion. And this way, you can start focusing your conscious control towards the thoughts and triggers first. Maybe try to limit them in your life. All that to say is that the only way to understand emotions better, we need to understand what's causing the emotion and how we react when we feel a certain emotion. And when we do, when we grasp a very good understanding of triggers, thoughts, as well as actions, our entire perspective on emotional intelligence changes. Your, your consciousness gains maturity because you can look at your emotions from a different perspective and understand that your emotions and your feelings are not you. And you can deassociate yourself from the situation and notice yourself feeling neutral because all you feel is a chemical reaction that was triggered by certain thoughts or events and then reinforced by certain actions. If you want to understand emotional intelligence better, start by understanding the TFAR system. There's a little trick that I often use where I combine emotional intelligence and I combine the TFAR system from neuro-linguistic programming into a little goal setting formula. And that's a way where you can set goals and make sure that you monitor your progress on an emotional level as well as on a physical level of actual growth towards your goal. So you wanna look at thoughts, feelings, actions, results. Usually when we set a goal, we put the desired results and then we ask ourselves, okay, what do I need to do to get it. What do I need to work on? How can I get from where I am to where I'm trying to go? And we don't really focus on how am I supposed to feel and what am I supposed to be thinking about or learning more on? Because it goes against human nature to keep trying to reinforce a new behavior despite some lingering feelings that are trying to derail you and take you on another path is that it's not just about what you need to do. You're talking about a shift in paradigm, a shift in perspective. You see a lot of people who became really successful in life. Tony Robbins, he stands up on stage and he says, he built this guy. They didn't just focus on how to make it, but who they needed to be to get it. And they all have routines and systems. They have a certain time where they wake up, they have certain books or information they're trying to acquire, they have certain habits that they do to trigger certain emotions and feelings and maintain them. And there's a lot, again, that goes into this. Now, now I know what you're thinking. How can I use the TFAR system in emotional intelligence? You will know all the answers very soon. But before you do, you need to establish a very good understanding of the emotional roller coaster. Thank you.